Hello. I want to tell you about some geopolitical junkets, even in World War Two. <laughs> and this time, it's not the Rothschilds who are behind it. Right then, so I found this rereading the issues about uh, the daughters of the Rothschilds. Yeah, that's Plump Hanna. She, uh, she was the mother of the child who married into the Roxburgh lineage. Yeah, when Bobo <laughs> was the boss. That's one duke back in time. That's the current duke's dad. So this is gossip in the ducal sector again. And I want to show you how bloody serious it is. Because they go to the war zones. If you watch the movie about the charge of the Light Brigade and Lord Raglan going into the Crimea with other people's wives as his concubine in the battlefield region, you will see how serious it is. Yeah, that's a lot f longer back in time than World War Two, but there were massive delegations of elites junketing in Palestine, and now Palestine is the most talked about issue in the world, because immediately after the war, they partitioned it. The Balfers were involved in that. That's Arthur Balfour. The Rothschilds fund everything, of course, and all of the things about the. Even the, one of the chef families or the artistic families that were with the news teams in Palestine immediately post-war. I forget what the name of that family was. But let's just show you a little snippet from one of these. Uh, <laughs> and I've got some data on the Balfers, which is all twisted. Because that this time, the Balfers data is on them in the fashion industry. Yeah. <laughs> And all of it is not the Balfers that were in Newton Dawn in my birthplace, yeah, but the Balfers that now live in Arundel and all over the aristocratic world. And let me show you what they do in wartime. So this is the Roxburgh Tabs, one of my second set of registrations of the Roxburghs, <laughs> yeah, on one note. I'll take a wee bit of time to open. So it's mean of me to play Hannah Rothschild's music, but she's on, we're only one generation out. Plump Hannah, that married the British Prime Minister uh, Archie Rosebery, uh, she died at 40, and I don't know whether or not that was pressure for the family. It was a horrible blood disease. I forget what the name of the blood disease was, but she died really young. They had a house in Naples where the religious fraud and all of the Ita Italian central bank frauds are perpetrated. Okay, Bobo and his so <laughs> it's childless Mary. This one. So this was the uh, ninth Duke of Roxburgh's first wife, the Marquis of Crewe. Okay, <laughs> famous person now because of what I've explored in the past, in the recent past. This bit passed me by. It's actually an obituary. She's a lovely looking woman, like all of them. All of them are lovely looking. All of them are genial looking. And all of them like to have a good time. That's why they are brought into the families as debutantes. So that's Mary, Duchess of Roxburgh, was the daughter of a Marquis who resisted an attempt by her husband to evict her from his hundred room ducal seat. That's Bobo with the little Hitler-like moustache. But let's go down and see what they do in wartime. <laughs> okay, and what the summary for that is, the junkets for the Aristos, who were the royal equerries in Palestine, Arabia and the Holy Lands in World War Two, were just taken for granted. Uh, and one of the husbands in the stories here is under a 65 million 
betting depot I think it may have been uh, some of her relatives in crew or it may even have been Bobo himself let's go down and read it word for word I have not highlighted anything here ok so there's the Roxburgh Castle that is so nearby today the whole of my town has been consumed by a meaningless cycle race all of the cars are <laughs> from advertising companies are massive uh, fraudsters so you've got the first of them that is the associated with the sponsorship for the cycling rally yeah and they've come all across from Cumbria today all across that terrain I've been talking about for the last two months yeah <laughs> I'm in the court again on Friday and they know this time I've got the arms for Iraq agenda on my posters I've, they've got the massive shareholding frauds of Stephen Andrew Hancock's my wife's employer before they changed the story and we've got all of the links to the Rothschilds in Lothian Road in Lothian 50 in Parland Auckland yeah all of it lined up to come at them <laughs> they will not let me talk about it I very much doubt but this I want to tell you about because it shocked me when I read it <laughs> you remember the charge of the light brigade and the fudge campaign and all of the deaths so there is the first wife of Bobo the ninth duke eh? and the duchess sympathised with Mary Roxburgh but her husband an aristocrat of the old school plumped for the duke <laughs> ok so they had a turbulent divorce proceedings eh, and it took a lot of his efforts eh, and eventually he resorted to common law and a jury I believe to get rid of her yeah and it's quite easy to see how you can buy the juries yeah but the judiciary are far more difficult to buy they demand a lot more yeah which is why society is now dismembered okay so that's her on March the 23rd 1915 she lived I think to within a few months of being a hundred years old and I think she died in 2014 ok here we have the splendour of his career the Lord Lord Crewe in, inherited his father's barony in 1885 was sub subsequently recreated an Earl 1895 and a Marquis 1911 as a liberal statesman he held several important offices among them wait for it Viceroy of Ireland Secretary of State for India and the Colonies Lord President of the Council and Ambassador to France yeah that's her dad <laughs> yeah so Moncton Mills Milnes rather the splendour of his career however was punctuated by an amiable recklessness in money matters and in 1904 he was said to have amassed debts of £600,000 nearly £64 million today as a result of extravagance and speculation not least on the race course. Lady Crewe was a daughter of the 5th Earl of Rosebery, Liberal Prime Minister in 1894-95 by Hannah Rothschild, daughter of Baron Mayor de Rothschild, who built Mentmore. It is massive. <laughs> she entertained with panache and cast the net of friendship widely. Some found her formidable. <laughs> right then. So let's just keep going down until we get to the bit about the war that captured my attention I have not marked any of this born into the purple of high office and beautiful possessions Mary Crew Milnes was brought up at Crew Hall remember this is her obituary a huge Jacobean pile yeah, the Jacobean concept uh, and Jacobean is the design of the house that is massive and grandiose rebuilt by Barry on the outskirts of the Cheshire Railway Town and at Crew House Curzon Street one of the last great mansions of Mayfair in 1935 she was married in Westminster Abbey to the 9th Duke of Roxburgh Bobo to his intimates a Scottish landowner of more than 80,000 acres and perhaps the best shot in the kingdom <laughs> quite pleased he's passed on now yet he was not a popular man with the locals apparently but I just remember 
the last few years of his life as a youngster in the town. In 1937, the Duchess's imposing stature and dark good looks were again seen to advantage in Abbey, in the Abbey at the coronation of George VI, Starmering King and Queen Elizabeth, with duchesses of Buccleuch, Norfolk and, Ru and Rutland, she carried the new Queen's train. That's the Buccleuchs that I'm going to tell you about in the next video, maybe tomorrow morning, but they are right into everything that happens across towards Cumbria. Yeah, and they're the people that took over the land that was taken from the German Hanoverians when they were involved in the scandal about Queen Victoria's children and her marriage, her bigamous marriage to Prince Albert. Yeah, that's royal, that's uh, Prince, blind Prince George of Cumbria and Teviotdale and the Buccleuchs have bought all of their land when they were evicted from it after World War, I think it was World War I was over, then they were chased out of the country. <laughs> it may well have been World War II, it's an amazing story, yet they can literally get away with genocide because they're the elites from all over Europe. Okay, so that's the Duchesses of Buccleuch, uh, G George VI and Queen Elizabeth II's, uh, oh no, so this is that must be the Queen Mum, I think, with the Duchess of Buccleuch, Norfolk and Rutland. She carried the new Queen's train. Mary Roxburgh showed enterprise in the early months of the war, wait for it, by joining a party of illicit wives who had wangled passages to the Middle East to be with their army husbands. Peter Coates, the garden designer, and ADC, I think that will be adjunct, uh, deputy commander or something to General Wavell that's a huge name in wartime noted in April 1940 Palestine is more like Ladies Day at Ascot than ever yet that's the Palestine that everyone grieves for all through the Facebook membership yet all of the people in Canada all of the activists all around the world they are absolutely besotted with freeing it and it's our leaders what created the intel movement that is Facebook that are abusing it all of the time. It was partitioned yet yeah, immediately after World War II and the Israeli nation was created and it's carved up out of their terrain. Actually, so, Palestine is more like Ladies Day at Ascot than ever. That's General Wavell's statement. Actually, I disapprove of them being here just because they can pull strings and have the fear but as they are all friends I can't work against them. A few weeks later the ever obliging ADC extricated the Duchess from her car marooned near Jerusalem in a herd of goats. Yeah? So they're holidaying yet yeah, in their elite way yet yeah, in the massive race course debt pool that some of them and their parents are in <laughs> and it is absolutely sickening because when you look at the news now the people from those countries yet yeah, get all the blame for what happens when Tony Blair is doing the dirty here's pictures of Assad of Syria meeting all of our leaders that's him meeting the Pope yeah. <laughs> this is the Syria that was the no bombing zone that is the source of the Arab Spring. That bastard there shops with Tony Blair and his wife in London. Okay? Does not say that there. Look it up on the internet. Look up the uh, the uh, stills of that. Okay? And I don't think I've got anything on my website on that. Uh, So that's Pope Francis, Pope uh, Benedict the Nazi, <laughs> Queen Elizabeth, John Kerry and Tony Blair. All of them were educated in the English speaking countries. Yeah? In his case and his wife's, that's America. His wife has taken a fall since I exposed all of this in 2012. 
Yeah, uh, and there's President Assad full interviews. That English-speaking world is inspiring speaker, public school boy like the rest of them. Let's see what else we can find. Blair and Assad Google search. further with that. Uh, let me show you also how the aristocrats are allowed to get away with trivialization of all their lives and they're all in different places. Yeah, the label the Duke of Norfolk is completely misleading. They don't live anywhere near Norfolk and it's the same for all of the aristos all around our country for confusion reasons. Yeah, and that means that they can get intermarried and that's the Buccleus, and that is the Scots, and that is the uh, Dukes and Duchesses of Dalkeith and of Haddington, and all of the places. They're all intermarried, and their genes are all over the place. Okay? And so that's why I've highlighted this tab, which is, so there's the Wynne Williams thing, which is the linkage to New Zealand for the new Duke. Yeah? Uh, and you've got his old wife was the daughter of the uh, sorry is the yeah the daughter of Britain's richest man the Duke of Westminster okay uh, and it's quite shameful that we can pretend that our leaders of our armies are going into war zones in the middle of World War Two and they're taking their wives with them yeah it's not chivalrous because for them it's not dangerous because they organise all of the wars and the profiteering from it. Under the head, as the Knights of Malta and all of those little labels that they get, yeah, they're the head of all of those armies. Right, I think I'm going to stop so I can go on to the other shockers that I've learned today. Okay, uh, and I, I could show you the ball for fl frippery out of the different bases. Let's give you a little snippet of that. Uh, so if I shut them down. So that was Childless Mary Care. Let's look at the Balfers now and just show you the pictures of how they engage in the yeah, trivial uh, debutante activities and how all of it becomes world class and entrepreneurial brilliance, yeah, right in the middle of world wars. Okay, there are only two tabs on this because uh, I thought I'd found another link to my mate Roddy who lives on the Newton Dawn estate. That's the land of Nod, if you turn it around, with the river Eden running through it. <laughs> right then, and I met Roddy on the estate, and he was playing tennis on his own. And I thought, ah, a little bit of actual, recordable data on what Roddy does. But no, it's not the Scottish connection. It's the bloody bimbos in Arundel. <laughs> okay, that's Tessa. Lovely. Listen, quite skinny. She's gotten on a bit since that photo was taken. Although that's only 2010. <laughs> yeah, and that's in her... Uh, does it? So, executive Roderick Balfour, mother of four stunning daughters, grandmother of four, chic and well-connected, according to no less than the Times of London. And then, let's go down... <laughs> and see the type of parties that were sent into Palestine yeah, to console the hard-working generals yeah, and all of those people, all of the landed gentry are the people that get to go to Colditz with their Batman in tow that's Carlisle Consultants in the UK A.K. the Sisterhood Caroline Hextall, Carol McGee, Tessa Balfour same one 
yeah uh, and what else have we got Tessa Balfour, Karen Nicholson Beatrice Bolton Vicky Wilson, Anna Pearson Gregory, Nikki Bering are you getting the magnitude of the Bolton banking names the Pearson banking names the Bering banking names and the Sinclair <laughs> yeah, there's a solicitor in Jedburgh and Sinclairs are legendary if you go to the museum in Jedburgh yeah and all of them in the old days had to live their lives in risk that they were going to be cut down because there was a better option just around the corner and this is not little Roddy that plays tennis on his own this is investment executive Roderick Balfour mother of four stunning daughters grandmother of four and chic and well connected okay <laughs> theirs is so this is and although she does not like to talk about it Lady Balfour is also daughter of the late 17th Duke of Norfolk and sister to the current 18th Duke yeah that's not Norfolk that is Arundel in the Sussex coast yeah right below the Itchen and the Test where the drug running triumvirate worked with Prince Philip to get the drugs out and they actually sired Queen Elizabeth's third fourth and fifth children because Prince Philip had been kicked out of the bedroom by then. Theirs is the oldest dukedom in Britain, and the family has been one of England's most prominent for more than 500 years. As wife of Roderick Balfour, the fifth Earl of Balfour, she is also the Countess of, of Balfour. Oh, and one of her brothers-in-law is television personality Sir David Frost, but she would rather you didn't ask about it. <laughs> okay? And here we are again, another series of mugshots. Roderick Balfour, Nick George, Lady Val, Naha George, Tessa's sister, Lady Maria Wigan, Tessa in Carlisle, E.W. Oh, and this is the Balfours of Carlisle too. So we're off to the other side of the country again, into Cumbria, where all of the news, that's where the cyclists came from today. Because everything I have revealed all of the world ignores and there's Lady Kinvara again you know the lissom looking one that we featured in the video about the beheading of uh, Lady Jane Grey the beheading of Anne Boleyn and the beheading of Mary Queen of Scots <laughs> Ricardo Lanza and Charlie Wigan Maria's husband Tessa's daughters Maria's wedding party Lady Kinvara Lanza Lady Maria Wigan Lady Willa Franks and Lady Candida Balfour. Aren't they lovely? Yeah, I'm going to stop. Yeah, it's tragic. Watch the video, of the movie about the charge of the Light Brigade and see how they, they look down on the death of all of the troops in all of those great conflicts. And Lord Raglan gets his leg over right on the top of the hill well away from all of the dangers that the people that are charging on the horses have to face <laughs> okay and I'm going to stop and I'm going to take you now to that last tab which is on <laughs> stunning things that I've discovered about the history of religion in the Scottish borders yeah, and how Kelso Abbey is allowed to claim lands from the Buclu territory away across where the revolutionary army Armstrongs come from. I'm going to make it another short video like this one. Tessa's grandchildren. Okay, I won't tell you what their names are. Yeah, all of it, their whole lives are in massive, <laughs> massive meaningless things and the rest of the world has to live in poverty everybody's pay is frozen all of them have been in charge of the world since the French came across the channel in 1066 and all of it is coming out <laughs> right then night night